Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. Going to be speaking with Dr. Lee Peterson, Vice President of Product Development at United Therapeutics, joining us on the program to talk about some data that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine concerning the INCREASE study. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Lee Peterson. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much. Vice President of Product Development at United Therapeutics. Give our listeners a brief insight into your area of expertise and then um, talk briefly about your role there at United Therapeutics as VP. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, So I've I've been at United Therapeutics since 2008, and um, I started as a a scientist, clinical research scientist, and and moved into this role. And this this is like the best job on the planet, I have to say, because I get to uh, I get to oversee and work with all of the various uh, team members on all of the research and development products um, and projects at United Therapeutics, and so we have um, we have several uh, PAH studies that have been conducted and are still being conducted um, with various uh, different therapies, mm-hmm. and we now have. Um, fibrosis studies that are ongoing with with um, our inhaled uh, drug, which is called Tyveso. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what I really, really like to do? I don't think uh, you or your listeners really know so much um, about maybe the history and, and what really led up to um, where we are today with regard to the increase study. And I just wanted to share that with you. Martine Rothblatt is the founder of United Therapeutics, and it's her daughter, Genesis, who was the inspiration of, of the company. Um, Genesis was diagnosed with pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH, in the early 90s, and at the time, there was no therapy approved for this condition. And uh, your listeners probably already know because... Um, you mentioned that they are health professionals, but PAH is a disease where the pulmonary arteries become narrowed. They're abnormally narrow, and it becomes harder and harder for the blood to travel from the right heart to the lungs. Okay. And um, as a result, the patient feels excessively out of breath and tired just from like climbing a single staircase or something. And as the disease progresses, the right heart has to work harder and harder to pump the blood, and eventually the heart might fail and lead to death. So Martine set out then to find a therapy that might help Genesis and really to save her life. And, um, and she found one. She found a molecule. It's called triprostinol. And it could work to open up the pulmonary arteries. I mentioned that they were narrowed in this condition. And, but it hadn't gone through the clinical studies that were required to get the drugs approved by the FDA. So Martine started United Therapeutics to conduct the studies. Um, and in 2002, triprostinol was approved for PAH. And um, now uh, we had conducted, you know, over two decades later, we looked into this uh, similar uh, lung disease um, called pulmonary hypertension associated with interstitial lung disease, which is PHILD. Mm-hmm. And um, several studies have been conducted with PAH medicines in PHILD, but they were either unsuccessful or actually showed safety concerns with these medicines. And so we're, we were delighted to, to see that we conducted a successful study mm-hmm. of Tyvesa, which is the inhaled form of triprostinol that had already been approved for PAH in 2009, that actually showed positive results in this increase uh, population that, uh, which have, again, PHILD, where there's no approved therapies for this group of patients. So uh, hence New England Journal uh, found that interesting, and, and we had that publication last month. So let's talk about some of the, the clear benefits uh, in patients with PHILD who are using Tyveso. There's a typical primary endpoint that's used in, in pulmonary hypertension studies. It's called the six-minute walk distance. It's used to give an indication uh, of exer- exercise capacity in, this, in, in the patients. And so um, this, um, this was a primary endpoint, and it was, you know, that we, we showed a significant improvement in exercise capacity 
statistically significant um, in patients who were receiving Tyvaso versus uh, versus placebo. But we also showed a statistically significant reduction in plasma concentration of a peptide. It's called nt pro -BNP, and that's a surrogate marker for pH disease severity, among other other conditions. But for this is what we're interested in here. Um, and we also showed, these are the secondary endpoints of the study, a decrease in risk of a clinical worsening event in patients who were on Tyvesa versus placebo and fewer exacerbations of the underlying lung disease. So this study, um, I mean, it met its primary and all of its secondary endpoints, including its safety endpoints, which were really, really important in light of, of two pretty big studies of PAH medications in this patient population that had actually failed and were terminated early due to safety concerns. But what about uh, Tavaso versus the current standard of care for PHILD patients? Well, that's the critical thing here. These patients have nothing. Um, now, to treat their fibrosis, if they have IPF, which is um, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, there are two medicines for the fibrosis. But that's, those are not approved mm -hmm. for PH, pulmonary, high temp, pulmonary hypertension associated um, mm -hmm. ILD. So there's nothing. And in fact, um, to diagnose their patients who have ILD, to diagnose their, their pulmonary hypertension, they, you know, the gold standard for diagnosis is the right heart cath. And it's, it's kind of invasive. And because there was no therapy, even if, you know, the patients found out that they have severe PAH or mild or moderate. I mean, the doctors had told me that it didn't really matter because they didn't really have anything, you know, they didn't need to know the specific details of the numbers because they didn't really have anything to treat them anyway. So now, you know, we, we assume there's a population of, you know, of patients who are, when they're first diagnosed with ILD, there's probably about 15% have, um, elevated uh, pulmonary pressures, which is, you know, pulmonary hypertension, um, greater than 25 milligrams mercury. That's the old definition. Now it's greater than 20. And um, there's probably about 15% that also who have ILD also have pH, but, and likely up to like 85 or 86% of patients who are ILD patients in their lifetime will develop pulmonary hypertension. But we're going to know more and more because the, the docs are going to start doing more and more right heart casts because now they will hopefully, um, we have uh, FDA decision in April, so hopefully um, this will be approved for these patients. And You talked about some of the, uh, the safety issues. Um, briefly, talk about some of the side effects, if any, that patients experienced, and then give us a website where we can go online and uh, learn some more about how Tyvesa works and um, a little bit more about the study. Yeah. Um, so the, the side effects are actually very consistent um, with, so we, we conducted um, some pretty large studies of Tyvesa in PAH, and the side effects are, are, are consistent with that. There's um, generally mild uh, headache, nausea. Um, for Tyvesa specifically, there's some cough, uh, throat irritation. And, and th those tend to actually, um, so these drugs, these prostacycline drugs, um, and triprostanol specifically, you, you titrate up. So you start with a very low dose and titrate up to an effective dose. And so generally with time, these, these AEs uh, tend to get become less um, uh, as the patient gets adapted to, okay. to the medicine. So the, there was nothing that was a surprise except for the fact we did for safety concerns. I, I mentioned that these other studies had failed. And we were suspecting that these studies had failed because of what's called VQ mismatch. We don't know for sure, but what we've always been concerned with is when you, when you give a systemic vasodilator to a patient that has lung fibrosis, there's always a concern that there's going to be not enough oxygen in the lung to, to match this increased blood flow due to the vasodilation. And that's called a VQ mismatch. That's, that's a big concern. But when you use an inhaled, inhaled therapy, um, it, 
because the drug only goes to the healthy uh, sex parts of the lungs, then there's less of a risk for that to happen. And so we did a test just to make sure that's called, it's a safety test and it's called um, the for forced vital capacity or FVC. And again, we did that to just make sure that our, that Tyvesa wasn't making this worse, wasn't actually um, making their lung function decline. And we had a really, really nice surprise that not only did it make it worse, but it actually made it better. Ah. So we've we've opened this, yeah. So now we're we've, we're starting a whole new program uh, based on this called the Teton studies, and we're going to be looking at Tyveso in another population where patients don't have, um, they haven't been diagnosed with PHILD, but they have the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So, um, but to learn more about all of this, it's there's the website Tyveso.com. We also have the United Therapeutics website. That uh, would be unitedtherapeutics.com. Dot com. Unitedtherapeutics.com. And then also for Tyveso specific, it's just Tyveso, T Y V A S O dot com. Great. Well, Dr. Peterson, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for asking, and, um, and it was really great to talk to you, too. You as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Lee Peterson, Vice President of Product Development at United Therapeutics. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download us SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.